What is going on, everybody? It's your boy, Uncle Fulio, and welcome to episode four of The Controversy. As always, the show is sponsored by Nothing But Nicks. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Also, hit that notification bell just to be notified anytime we go live or we have any new content for you. Before I get into my controversy take for this week, I'm going to give a big shout out and congratulations to my girl, Stephanie, who has her own show on the Nothing But Nicks network. It's called The Queen's Court. Make sure you definitely look out, be on the lookout for any new episodes that are coming from her as she gives her take on New York Knicks basketball and what she thinks that we should do moving forward and the current status of the team. Now, my controversial take for this week, ladies and gentlemen, it's very controversial. Actually, we had a big argument about it one of the last shows on NBK. The New York Knicks, ladies and gentlemen, are one player away. One player away from being top four in the Eastern Conference. And I'm talking perennially, a top four seed in the Eastern Conference. Now, if you're thinking about, well, what is he talking about? What player is he talking about that we need to bring to New York to help us to help us get to that next level? I have a list of five players that I think we should go after in the offseason and you know pay some money to, to, to come improve this team. Now, before I talk about those five players, I'm gonna talk about what we currently have on this roster. You have Julius Randle, who's having an all-star season. Definitely all NBA, definitely most improved player. I think he's the favorite for most improved player this season. People have been saying, you know, he needs to be in the MVP conversation. I don't think he's up there yet into that MVP level because he's not as dominant. But Julius Randle is definitely a piece that we need to keep moving forward. Then you have R.J. Barrett. R.J. Barrett is developing so nicely, so well. He's becoming a player that we can depend on late in games. It wasn't like that in the beginning of the season, but now R.J. Barrett has shown that he's going to be a really good player in this league, if not great player in this league moving forward. And it's definitely someone they should definitely keep uh, keep around. Then you got the Mitchell Robinsons and Emmanuel Quickly's. Very young, young players that the Knicks found in the draft late in the, in the first round and the second round in the draft that, you know, turned out to be really, really nice players. And we can definitely use them moving forward. So now with that backdrop of players that the Knicks have, Moving forward, you also have a bunch of role players that are signed to one-year deals. You know, Alec Burks and, and Reggie Bullock. You know, players like that who I feel the Knicks are going to bring back next season. They fit the mold of what Tom Thibodeau was trying to do here. And they they have, you know, been giving us really good contributions. Um, you know, making game-winning defensive plays, game-winning uh, clutch baskets. Um, these players are really, really good. And I think... The Knicks definitely need to look at bringing those guys back next season and, and, and sign them to, a, to two, three-year deals to keep them around, to keep this core intact. And even with all of that, ladies and gentlemen, the Knicks still have all their draft picks. They have the Dallas picks, and they still have a bunch of cap space where they can go out and sign players in free agency. Now, about free agency, I'm going to give you those five players who I think the Knicks should definitely go after in the offseason to propel them to that next level. I have one player who did not make my list, but I think it's an honorable mention that we should consider bringing in, and that's DeMar DeRozan for all the San Antonio Spurs. Veteran wing can give you 20 a night, easily he can give you 20 a night. Not the greatest defender, and he's, he's, get, he's making $27 million right now. I don't expect him to make that much money moving forward in his career, but he's definitely a player that we should look to bring in to give that added boost in scoring uh, in the starting lineup. I would definitely consider bringing DeMar DeRozan in here. But let's get to the five players who I think we should go after this offseason. At number one, and my, the most coveted possession, I think, that would no question take the Knicks to the next level, Kawhi Leonard, the claw. The reason why I think he is the most coveted person that we should go after, I mean, the, the record and, 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 and everything speaks for itself two-time finals MVP, definitely MVP caliber whenever he's not doing the load management stuff, and will be a perfect two-way wing for this for this team. Not just what he brings in the offensive end, the ability to go get a bucket whenever you need it, the ability to make, you know, to make shots and, and, and to get to the free throw line, but he is also a defensive player of the year candidate almost every single year. That's why they call him the claw, ladies and gentlemen. Imagine a lineup with him and Julius Randle and RJ and Mitch and, you know, whoever we have at point guard moving forward. That is a crazy, scary lineup, not just offensively, but defensively as well. So Kawhi Leonard should be number one on, on, on our list. And frankly, everyone's list in the NBA because he definitely will help us out moving forward. 
Now, let's say if we can't get him, you know, and people were saying, you know, he wants to stay in L.A. and he wants to be close to home and things like that. The next player I would go after, Victor Oladipo. Another two-way wing, former All-Star. People were saying that, you know, it's, it's good that we didn't trade for him because he was going to go to Miami anyway. I don't believe in that. I definitely don't believe in that at all. Because if things don't work out in Miami, he's going to be back on the free agent market looking to get picked up. The talent speaks for itself. Offensively, he can get you a bucket. Defensively, he can lock down the opposing two guard. We can probably move RJ to the three and have Oladipo at the two or vice versa. So definitely from a talent standpoint, Victor Oladipo is someone I would want on this team, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't believe in the nonsense about him, you know, committing to Miami long term and, and he's going to sign with Miami no matter what. Because anything can happen. That's what, that's what free agency is for. How come they don't just sign him to an extension right now? If that's the case, it's another reason why I believe the Knicks didn't necessarily make a bad thing. You know, wasn't uh, wasn't a bad thing for them to trade for Carmelo Anthony. There's no telling what Carmel, Carm Carmelo Anthony might have went in the offseason. Chicago was looking after him back then. So Victor Oladipo is number two on my list, ladies and gentlemen. Definitely a, a good you know fit with this team, what Tibbs is trying to do, um, and and he will definitely help us moving forward. Then the third player on my list I want to talk about. Dennis Schroeder. Dennis Schroeder. Now, a lot of people in LA, um, as far as Lakers fans, the Lakers fans that I know, they definitely would like to keep Dennis Schroeder around. But it doesn't seem like they're willing to pay Dennis Schroeder too much money to, to come back with, with that Laker team um, moving forward. I think we should pay him the money. I would give Dennis Schroeder $20 million to come here and be our starting point guard of the future. He's another two-way guy that can go out and get you a bucket, and he can play defense really really well really good defensive player than his shoulder is and he fits the timeline another young player playing with julius randall and rj barrett and the rest of the young talent that we have here i think Dennis shoulder will be will truly be an upgrade at the point guard position you know that's easy and i, I think we definitely have the money to pay him to have him you know play play with us moving forward so Dennis shoulder is another player i will look for ladies and gentlemen at number four uh, you guys aren't gonna like this one. Former Brooklyn Net, Spencer Dinwiddie. He probably still plays for the for the Brooklyn Nets, but he's hurt right now. But Spencer Dinwiddie, six six point guard, um, definitely can go out and get you a bucket. Definitely would be an upgrade at the point guard position. Um, the league is trending towards bigger point guards, so at six six, Spencer, Spencer Dinwiddie definitely fits the mold. I would definitely have Spencer Dinwiddie on this team. Um, and, and imagine a lineup with him, Julius Randle, and RJ. That looks pretty good to me. You know, he can go out and get you a buck, and I think he, he, he's only going to get better moving forward. And last but not least, the last player that I would like to see the Knicks go after is Norman Powell. Norman Powell. Defensively, this guy is a monster. He can hit clutch buckets. He has a championship ring. He has that championship pedigree. And he seems like a Tibbs player that can that can definitely play and, and, and Tibbs can rely on um, and, and to get major minutes for this team. Definitely, without a doubt. So those are the five players that I think that can definitely take the Knicks to the next level um, if we go out and be aggressive for those players in free agency. And then, of course, if we if we bring back Alec Burks or Reggie Bullock um, and, and, and even Todd Gibson, we can bring those guys back, you know, and the Knicks still can can, can draft players and, 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 and all that. And then what are we talking about, ladies and gentlemen? Right now, the Knicks are fighting right now for playoff positioning in between the four and, and, and ten, and it's really, really tight there. The Knicks have been holding their own right now. Right now, they're holding their own. So imagine what it will be like if we can be able to add one of those players in the offseason to this team. Ooh, we, the sky is the limit for this team, ladies and gentlemen. The sky is the limit. As always, if you agree or you disagree with me, make sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel. And if there's any player that I didn't mention that you think we should go after, make sure you put it in the comments below. And let's talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. But the fact still remains. The New York Knickerbockers are one player away. One player away from going to that next level and putting themselves in that upper echelon of the Eastern Conference. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, thank you. And I look forward to bringing more content for you in the future. Once again, it's your boy, Uncle Fulio, and this is The Controversy. I'm out.